Pioneer Gingerbread uh, just came out of the oven. Looks delicious. Um, I My mom requested that I make this uh, yet again because she really loved the first batch that I made up. So I just have it here cooling in the uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder approved uh, splatterware. Well, hey guys, happy Vlogmas Day 25. It's actually late in the afternoon um, and I'm about to head on out to go over to my mom's house uh, for today is um, when you're watching this, it'll be Vlogmas Day 25, um, but this is the, um, this is still the weekend of Christmas, so this is a Saturday um, before Christmas, so I'm heading over to my mom's house. Um, I woke up, she requested that I make that gingerbread, um, and so I did that, and I went to the gym, I just took a shower, and I'm like air drying my hair here. But because I knew I was going to the gym this morning, I didn't bother with um, my mascara. That's why you just saw me put on uh, my sunscreen. <laughs> um, and you may ask, well, why did she put on sunscreen? When Wasn't she just gonna take a shower and wash it off? Because it's a behavior, you know? And plus, I didn't know if the window was gonna be open in there. And what if I got locked out of my apartment and had to go outside? You know, things happen. It's a behavior, I don't even think about it, but I just put it on every day and reapply reapply so I just reapplied the um, the event sunscreen that I am really loving and I have to say guys a mask update okay so last night while I um, you know discredited the merits of the Asiatic uh, of the Asiatic uh, what is it liverwort Pennywort, Asiatic Pennywort, sorry, Centella Asiatica in the cream shop's Let It Glow, Let It Glow. I have to say, whenever I finish a cream shop mask, I just feel so awesome. <laughs> these, these are something CVS, you can get at CVS, the cream shop ones. I mean, one of you kind people sent this to me, um, but I swear they, they really are awesome. And I feel as though the following morning, my skin, I feel as though the following morning my skin is in fact a lot more hydrated. And when I take the mask off um, and I sit down to edit the video, I just feel like my eyes are somehow like super hydrated. I don't know why. It's not like I put it around my eyes or anything. I just, I really feel like I have just hydrated the stink out of my face. So this one was really awesome. I loved it. If you'll recall the other night I did this one. However, this was terrible. I do not recommend this at all. I, I don't, I think it had like a micro, micro, I think it had maybe a nanomole of uh, aloe in it. It was pretty terrible. Um, heavily fragranced and when I took it off, I actually just, you know, washed my face because it just, it was not good. It was not moisturizing at all and it, it had a bad fragrance. So Jean-Pierre gets, gets a thumbs down. Um, <laughs> Cream Shop Let It Glow though. This one was, was a thumbs up. I enjoyed it. Oh, but update on these Gelosity pens that I got last night at CVS. Uh, that was an impulse purchase uh, worth going after. I am really loving them. They have a really smooth, um, smooth write. I typically enjoy the Pilot G2 gel clickable pens, so I'm interested to see how the longevity of these Bic gelosities comp uh, compares, uh, but the smoothness I think is a little bit superior. <laughs> and these I got a few days ago. They were on clearance at Kroger for a dollar. I used to write with these I think in middle school when we were first allowed to write with non um, non pencil, we could write with pen. I had I had this pack of, of colored big pens, and admittedly they don't have the the greatest tip, but there's something um, nostalgic. I have some nostalgia about taking notes with these in middle school that I really enjoy writing writing jotting down quick notes with. So yeah, loving my planner still, guys. As I mentioned yesterday, this is the um, blue sky planner. I'm doing really well on it. Sometimes I just doodle in it like here's December I just uh, colored a little bit um, and kind of made it artsy and I put some of my mom's uh, Christmas tree washi tape there this is just the entire month of December here I'm covering this up because I have some personal information here but yeah I really like this layout here are some empty pages this is what the week looks like you know you can put your kind of priorities <laughs> for the week at the top and then you can make a little to-do list here I think it's just the right size 
And the planner itself is uh, really easy to move around. So far, this has been the best planner I've ever had. I'm really enjoying it. I got this at Target. I have a link down below, but the pattern, um, I couldn't find this particular pattern, but it's the same size. And I like the 2007, you know, I like doing the uh, the school calendar for some reason. I'm just a forever student. I like following that that calendar but some people like the entire year the January to December or whatever but I prefer the the school style so yeah got that and I'm gonna get this wrapped up so that I can take it to my mom's house so I can uh, make sure keeping up with my planner <laughs> but if you're looking for a planner for the upcoming year um, you know you want to get organized or whatever I recommend these I got it at Target but you can get it on Amazon I think it's a little cheaper on Amazon honestly. so yeah I'm gonna head on over to my mom's house now and uh, I will check in with you guys later still going strong the gingerbread house kit is uh lasted I was I was thinking that the little frosting icicles would get soggy here. No, and we had a lot of moisture last night. Yeah. I made some more. Ooh, I love those. Yes. yes, yes. I'm in here. So I just got here to my mom's, and it's festive as festive can be in here. And I brought over a batch of the uh, that Cambria Joy's uh, granola that I made. I left it for my mail carrier and noticed that that he had taken it. So I'm I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, there's no nut allergy. But anyways, um, I just have a batch here for my mom's neighbors that I wanted to take over, and then I made her a little one too. And then you guys saw me making the. You guys saw me making the gingerbread this morning, and um, I told you yesterday in the vlog that I got a card from my mom, so I just taped it on here with some washi tape and some stickers and made it festive like a present. So and there's Samantha beaming in her nutcracker glory. You got yeah, a I'm Christmas glad you special put her Christmas dress up. Yeah, this music? is Christmas at Belmont with Cheryl hmm. Crow. It's uh, in Nashville. Ooh. Speaking of, well, this is North Carolina, but for whatever reason, it made me think of this. Um, in the gym today, they had the Food Network on, and they had the gingerbread bake-off in oh, um, Omni Grove, Grove Omni Grove Hotel, hotel. That hotel in uh, North Carolina. I want to go to that sometime. It looks really cool. Um, and the little, um, they had a gingerbread house with all little dogs living oh, in the gingerbread wow, house. Cute. All out of fondant. The fondant kind of, I think I would be good at the fondant because it's sort of like Sculpey. Like yeah, it's like Sculpey, so, yeah, but anyways. Well, next year maybe you can ratchet it up a little bit. Maybe. Don't, don't get your hopes up. I'm, I'm feeling rather, you know, proud of myself for my accomplishment here with this pre-built kit. I don't know. <laughs> but oh yeah, God. we're going to walk over the uh, granola now. So that's what's going on. <laughs> Light show commences. You got it on the sparkle setting? <laughs> Green and red. I think that's the psychedelic setting. <laughs> <laughs> and Samantha's got her. One of you guys made this cute little stocking here. I brought it over. <laughs> yeah, I'm donning my uh, Santa hat and my 
my apron here. I'm about to fix myself some something to eat. My mom's having lentil soup over there um, that she made in the crock pot for us. It looks good. This is uh, lentils, tomato, and potatoes. Yeah. We're gonna have. Ooh, that looks there. good. So, and you've got your village rocking here. And making yet another uh, appearance is Matt and Steve's extreme bean. You like these hot and spicy green yeah, beans? Yeah, they're really good. You got a second jar. <laughs> I did. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> a new I one. recommend them. And you also got these. Yeah. Festive Christmas cookies. You know, Traditional spice stuff. windmill. This look good. Okay. Yeah. You're having pita chips and and uh, hum and your hummus. Yeah. Those are Amy's. Are vegan? I think so. Yeah. I'm just baked pita bread, oh. right? There. I don't see any uh, eggs. You know, I noticed like sometimes there are eggs and things, but it's like why are there eggs? And things? Yeah, eggs are one of the things that can be hard to to avoid. I find. Our eggs. Yeah, because I don't really. Just about everything. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Could you my put mom, a couple string beans in there? My mom's here? laughing at me. What? I like my classy pal bib. I You're I wear adorable. it every. I wear it whenever I eat dinner. <laughs> it keeps my shirt clean. I'm a messy eater. It's also really good for uh, chopping beets. You know, oh, yeah. I don't like to chop beets because they get all over. They make mm -hmm. a mess. I bought some beets. Um, yeah, I saw those. Beets. Or pickled beets. Those look good. May I, would you pass me the Oh, yeah, I'll pass you the, pass the extreme beans here. Extreme beans. <laughs> wouldn't that be a fun, uh, wouldn't that be a fun video challenge? You see who can, uh, can chug the extreme bean juice. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, they have those spicy. crazy, they have a lot of crazy challenges yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, they do. Yeah. You know, I'm not a uh, Bloody Mary fan, uh -huh. but I'm sure these would be good in a Bloody Mary. Oh, I bet they would. Yeah, I enjoy Bloody Marys. Um, okay. Mostly because of the garnish. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey guys. So, it's the end of the night. We had a fabulous dinner. <laughs> I'm just donning my... Santa hat here. <laughs> you guys have been asking me about that event sunscreen that I've been wearing and you also were asking me some questions about the one that my mom wears. So I went ahead and pulled them both out here. This is the one that I'm using, okay? This is the um, uh, Very High Protection um, Emulsion UVA SPF 50. This is the one that um, one of you guys sent me from Europe, so it's not available here in the U.S. I have it linked down below um, to Amazon UK um, for the European formulation if you're interested. Um, I don't know. So this has uh, Biscotrizol, which is the UVA filter that uh, is not FDA approved here in the U.S. yet, uh, but it's much more stable as a UVA filter than avabenzone, which is what we have here. Furthermore, um, in the presence of avabenzone, it, it adds some stability to avabenzone, so it just makes chemical sunscreens um, a little bit more photo stable in general and offer a little bit more of a guaranteed longer uh, UVA protection, UVA being the wavelengths of ultraviolet light that penetrate deeply into the skin and age, age the skin, but also contribute to skin cancers and contribute to dark spots and melasma. Now, if you were to find a chemical sunscreen in the United States, it would likely contain the ingredients avabenzone as the primary UVA filter. Avabenzone is pretty good as a UVA filter, but it's not particularly photostable, so it degrades really pretty quickly. Um, regardless, both whether it be a European sunscreen, a sunscreen from Japan, what have you, all sunscreens need to be reapplied consistently throughout the day because you rub them off, you, you sweat, and if you don't apply a couple of layers of a, a couple of layers of a single sunscreen at least, you're gonna have skip areas, so areas that aren't protected. I've done studies on this actually, um, because after after you get like a laser treatment or a, a chemical peel in a dermatologist's office. 
to go over sun protection with you. Um, they give you sunscreen samples. It's really an important part of post-procedural care. It's really, really good sun protection. After you have a chemical peel or a laser therapy, the skin barrier is transiently kind of impaired. It's essentially just been wounded, okay? Um, a wound has been, been created more or less, and so the skin's kind of in a healing, regenerative state. Sun protection at that time is really, really key. And some skin surgeons, dermatologists who specialize in skin surgery, actually did a really cool study. They had patients um, put on sunscreen right after their procedure, and they actually used chemical sunscreens. And they gave, gave them to the patients, and they said, here, put on the sunscreen. And then they took their photograph with one of those UV um, cameras, so they could see um, the areas where the sunscreen was um, versus not in terms of the application, and guess the area, guess what areas were skipped. Um, the areas we're all guilty of skipping. Around the eyes, um, the forehead, the sides of the face. Cheek area was the most densely populated. And my habit, too, is to just go ahead and dot it on my cheeks right away. Um, it really took a lot of conditioning for me to be able to always remember to get my forehead, my neck, my ears, the sides of my face, you know, prior to to my learning about, you know, sunscreen and as a dermatologist, um, you know, when I was younger in college, I think I probably just put it on my cheeks, honestly. I don't think I applied it everywhere you're supposed to. I think I was just kind of haphazard with it. Um, so it's really important that you get all areas that are sun exposed uh, because skin cancers on the top of the nose are very common. On, um, you know, around our lips, all of these areas are really common. So a note about that in terms of applying, very important that you reapply, you put layers on and you don't skip the eyes, the back of the neck, the ears, um, the sides of the face, very important. Now, the one that my mom is using is this um, high protection. She uses this just kind of like as a subtle makeup, if you will. It's the medium coverage. I was uh, given this and then I gave it to her because it's a little bit too dark for me. Um, this is a sunscreen you can get here in the U.S. It is, I actually really like it. It's fragrance-free, oil-free, um, you know, so good for sensitive skin and that it's fragrance-free. It's a mineral sunscreen, so it's zinc and titanium dioxide. So if this were not tinted, you would really be bothered most likely by the white film, but it's got two things going for it. It is tinted, um, and they probably microsized the uh, titanium dioxide and zinc, so they made these particles really, really tiny, and yes, that's safe. Um, but uh, these two together are pretty stable and offer decent and respectable coverage into the UVA wavelength. They also offer some respectable coverage into the visible wavelength of light. So if you were somebody with melasma or hyperpigmentation or dark spots, as I talked about, as I'm going to talk about in uh, Friday's Q&A, this type of sunscreen. It doesn't have to be this expensive one, guys. This type of sunscreen is really going to be the one that ideally suits you because the zinc titanium dioxide gives you good coverage against UVA, pretty decent coverage against UVA. UVA is really what contributes to dark spots and hyperpigmentation, but it also... I think I'm talking about this and you guys can't see it, but it also has iron oxide in it. Can you see that? Iron oxides. Iron oxide is another ingredient that they list in the inactive ingredients of these tinted sunscreens that, um, that uh, covers you against visible light, okay? Like the light that you can see, like right now, this light that's shining on me, subtly can contribute to persistent hyperpigmentation and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So those things about this tinted one and make it a good one if you're somebody who has dark spots, melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It really offers pretty decent respectable coverage against visible light, whereas if you just select a straight chemical sunscreen, meaning one that's got like avabenzone and a variety of other filters, it will uh, not offer you that, that level of protection against those broader wavelengths of light that contribute to dark spots and persistent hyperpigmentation. So yeah, fun facts. This is just a little comparison between these two. The thing I don't like about them is they're pretty expensive. So I will list down below some drugstore versions of these that I like. The drugstore version of this 
that I like, but admittedly have not tested it out on myself, and I don't think you guys like that much, is the Cetaphil Redness Relief. I think it's Redness Relief. I'll link it down below. It's a Cetaphil tinted sunscreen that has all of these all of these good good cops, but I'm hearing from you guys that the that it goes on kind of white and filmy, so that's sort of a bad cop in that the aesthetics of it aren't great, but it is a, a decent dupe for this. this. This is pretty expensive. La Roche-Posay also makes one that is respectable, um, has all these players in it, um, blends in pretty well, and uh, is a little less expensive than this one. So that's the Aven one. Dr. Jart, I have here, I don't wear this anymore. This is a very fair coloration, this poor Pore Care, Complex Pore Care. This is actually a pretty decent sunscreen, okay? It's um, SPF 30, a mineral sunscreen. It has the iron oxides in it, but it also has fragrance in it. Jart loves to put fragrance in things, so this is not ideal. Um, it, you know, it, 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 puts you, it just puts you at risk for developing a fragrance allergy. So, yeah. Key point here, though, the, the take-home message is that sunscreens all in the application got to make sure you cover all all areas that are you know sun exposed around the eyes those are the areas that are frequently skipped and then the other key point is that if you are somebody from dark suffering from dark spots post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation melasma you are most well served by a sunscreen that is broad spectrum zinc titanium dioxide and contains the ingredient iron oxide as well okay so those are just some take-home points about sunscreen today for you guys so stay tuned this friday for the q a about i'm doing i'm doing a little saturday night fever here about um tretinoin and melasma dark spots hyperpigmentation but anyways guys i hope you enjoyed the vlog today um and uh you're enjoying vlogmas it's almost over but Oh, maybe I can wear the Santa hat all year round. Who knows? But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.